Hi there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. May the Lord's peace and truth be with you all through his Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, for those who have the Holy Spirit. In this video that I'm about to play for you all, I want you to use your discernment. Because what you're about to see is the beginning of an explosive deception that is going about through all parts of the world. And it is the pastors, it is the shepherds within our churches who have fallen away that are leading the sheep to destruction. This is why it's so important to not only know the word of God, but to hold on to it. Because indeed in these last days, your faith will be tested. What I'm about to show you is the contrast between two shepherds who profess to be the shepherds of God. One you will see which speaks the truth, and his truth may seem as hatred and bigotry and isolation, but you use your own discernment. And the other one has fallen away, but still, but still proclaim himself to be a shepherd of God. Not only is he deceived, but he has brought the wolf having been a wolf himself or even being a wolf dressed in sheep clothing himself has even brought the wolf inside of the church to deceive the flock of God. But we are supposed to be as shepherds to protect the flock of God. So I'm going to go ahead and let this video play. I may pause it periodically but I want you to use your discernment. Well, this is what we're dealing with in these last days. The truth versus falsehood. Those who do not confess Christ truly, do not affirm the true gospel, have no place participating in any enterprise that intends to advance God's purpose and God's kingdom in the world. It is irrational. Why is it irrational? Four rhetorical questions lay it out for us. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? I mean, are, they, are these hard questions? They're rhetorical though they be, they are self-evident, axiomatic. What partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Obviously, none. Medicaid, the word for partnership here, it's a, it's a strong word. It's a synonym of koinonia. It is partner, companion, companionship. Uh, means to be a mutual partaker, find common ground. It is absolutely impossible for two such realities as righteousness and lawlessness to accomplish anything for God together. I have been looking forward to this evening for a very, very long time. It has been my desire to... Now open up your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears. But do not be caught up in his deception. Many of you know this individual by the name of James White. And many of you already heard of his reputation as a shepherd. But listen and examine what he's speaking about but do not believe because he is a deceiver. I'm going to let you listen to this. Engage in a dialogue like this. And when the opportunity came that I'd be coming into this area, uh, I contacted Dr. Cotty and I, I put out the call. This is what I was telling you about, about the interfaith dialogue. This is the reason why it is important to us not to enjoin in this interfaith dialogue. Because all it is really seeking is to deceive the sheep and to scatter the sheep, 
to remove the sheep from the truth. Uh, and the church here was, uh, was so kind to respond and to uh, join with us in providing a place for us to have our conversation this evening. I want you to understand uh, what our motivations are this evening in, in coming together. This is not a debate. Some of you have seen uh, debates that I have done around the world. Uh, this is not intended to be a debate. Uh, we are going to, of necessity, discuss differences that we have. Uh, the thing that makes this wonderful and the reason that I sought out Dr. Cotty, aside from the fact that I have learned so much from him uh, over the years, uh, that he's been a primary influence in my study of Islam. I am a student of Islam and I've learned much from him. But the reason I specifically sought him out is because I sense in him such a kindred spirit on the other side of the chasm that divides us in regards to our theology and our beliefs. He is a consistent Muslim. He believes what he says. He wants to seek for consistency amongst his people and his own practice. And so when you have two believing people, one Christian, one Muslim, come together and say, we need to discuss not only what divides us, but also where do we have similarities? How can we live in the same community? And the most important thing is this. If we do what we if we do what I hope happens this evening, we're going to do something absolutely unique. It hardly ever happens. And that is two communities where unfortunately there is a lot of fear on both sides. There is a lot of misunderstanding on both sides. And as a Christian, I want to see doors opened. As a Christian, I want you, as if you are a Christian here this evening, to not have fear of the Muslim people, but to have love. Do not believe in his deceptions, my brothers and sisters in Christ. For the love that he's speaking about is not the same love in which it is spoken of in scriptures. I want you to heed and understand that. To love someone does not mean you compromise with them. As Jesus said, as he has loved us, Jesus did not compromise with our sins. He did not compromise with our deception. He did not compromise with our rebellion. He sought to bring us to his level, and that is to the truth. He, but his love is compromising. As far as, I'm not talking about Jesus, I'm talking about this James White. When he speaks about love, he's talking about compromising with falsehood and believing falsehood. That's why I say this guy is a false teacher, false pastor, false shepherd. He's not seeking to protect the sheep from falsehood, but he's bringing them to falsehood, having fallen away himself. For the Muslim people. I want the Muslim people to understand that we care and that we want to have dialogue and that we're not seeking this evening to sweep our differences under the rug and say they don't matter. Dr. Qadi cannot present an Islam that is just simply one view amongst many. I believe in divine revelation. He believes in divine revelation. So how do we get along? How do our communities talk to one another? The sad fact of the matter is that conversation isn't happening. And I want it to start tonight. And I want it to start here. So uh, if, if you're a praying person, pray that we will have understanding. That as, if you're a Christian, I want you to hear what this man has to say. I want you to understand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the true body would not be praying for this. We don't pray for deception. We pray that all men come to the truth. But he's seeking dialogue. As it says in scriptures, what does light have to do with darkness? What do they have in common? You can still love him as a human being. But to subject yourself to something that is not the truth and you know it's not the truth through the Holy Spirit, that's a different story. Understand why he believes the things he does, what his life is like here in the United States as a Muslim. And I want you to hear, especially when he talks about what Islam is and what it is not and who speaks for Islam and all these types of things. I want you to hear so that we can have better communication with one another. That's why we're here this evening. Uh, I hope that's why you've come here this evening. Any attempted fellowship in common is ridiculous, damaging, 
falsely reassuring to the unbeliever and confusing to the world the thought that a believer could engage in fellowship with an unbeliever for some kingdom purpose or some spiritual purpose is as blasphemous as the idea that Jesus would cooperate as a partner with Satan in the same thing. It's unthinkable. God uses Satan. He does not fellowship with him. He does not associate with him. Pagans don't mind joining Christians in religious activity. They welcome it. Why? Because Satan wants to infiltrate. You understand that? They're ready to take you on. To embrace you. In fact, they love that. That's just a big score for them. Gives them legitimacy. We can't join with unbelievers in worship. We can't join with unbelievers in ministry. We can't join with unbelievers, listen, in any enterprise that involves God's name. That's blasphemy. That's sacrilegious. Says uh, that do not say he was crucified. They neither killed him. They meaning the children of Israel. They neither killed him nor crucified him, but rather, and this is really ambiguous, even in the area, it was made to appear to them so. I just translated the Arabic. What does that mean? It was made to appear to them so. Now that's what the Quran says. Muslim exegetes, and this is not from the Quran, this is their interpretation. So I don't consider their interpretation to be divine, but yes, we are sympathetic to it. I am sympathetic to it. Muslim exegetes have interpreted that Jesus was not crucified, nor even placed on the cross, but rather that God saved him. Now, this is an interpretation that is mainstream. And they claim, this is not from the Quran, as I said, this is from later Muslim historians and theologians. They claim that Judas, the traitor, was punished by God to resemble Jesus. So that when the Roman soldiers entered the garden, they saw Judas, the traitor, and they assumed him to be. My brothers and sisters, for the sake of the truth, I'm not going to allow you to listen to this fully because I know it. It's the fault. I know it's falsehood. And this is just entertaining the devil. This is very dangerous, especially to those who are newly to the faith, to leave the church after that. And look look how this shepherd supposedly is sitting very comfortable while this individual is speaking falsehood to the sheep. And the sheep is the audience that's listen to that, listening to that. So imagine someone that's newly newly in the faith of Jesus Christ listening to this guy What's going to happen? He's going to turn away from the true Jesus Christ and follow falsehood. All because of who? This one. Relaxed. He's okay with going to hell. And he does He does not mind sending everyone else with him. Yes, I'm not going to allow you to listen to the rest of it. I mean, I couldn't even listen to the whole thing myself. Let's speed it up. By the way, the term living God is a wonderful New Testament term. It's in contrast to uh, dead idols. We worship the living God. So any joining of ourselves to non-believers in any common enterprise that bears the name of God is a sacrilege. It is putting our God next to Dagon. All right, this is what I wanted to show you, but this is something that we're entering in in these last days where many churches in America and throughout all parts of the world, this would be normal for religions to come under one roof, and that is churches. 
to speak of their faith all gathered together. So basically, as we continue in these last days to have a church like this, where pastors are only speaking the word of God, won't be tolerated. Because as I say in other scriptures, even the Lord shown me in dreams, that not only is the world seeking coexistence and um, interfaith, but this is used to catch many off guard. And once the people are caught off guard, the enemy strikes and greater destruction falls, comes upon the people. I wanted to show you all that. Keep your eyes on the truth. Never reject it. Never harden your heart towards the Lord. If so, you will be deceived as well. Trust in the Lord. You're a God. And trust in Jesus always. Y'all take care.